Hi, this is a screencast to walk you through the calculations for Hess's Law, the practice lab we did uh, looking at magnesium combining with HCl as magnesium oxide and magnesium metal. So this is the lab sheet that you got. Right here, this is the equation that we're interested in. And then if you scroll down, they have the equations there that you can use to come up with these values. And as a reminder, you had a pre-lab sheet where you calculated these heats of reaction using the heats of formation from in the Glencoe book. So this uh, first equation had a heat of formation of minus 151. The second one is minus 466.8. And the third is minus 285.8. And then when we combine them, we actually have to flip the first equation to add these up and get the desired equation. So the theoretical heat of equation for the uh, reaction we're interested in is negative 601.6. And again, I got that by converting this to a positive 151, leaving the other two as negatives, and then summing all three. So then, as you start doing uh, the calculations, keep an eye on the uh, rubric that they give you, that I gave you from IB that they use as they're calculating this. And as you take a look at it then, things you have to be careful is you have to be able to propagate your error all the way through, and you're going to calculate your experimental value for these two equations. This one, we weren't able to do in the lab, so we're going to use the literature value for this. But these two, we're going to use our experimental values, then add our two experimental values with this one up and see how close it relates to this one. Now, we're going to expect both of our experimental values to be low because it's a calorimeter, and we'd expect this one to be low. But um, if our calorimeter is very good, the percentage that we're off on each of these measurements and then our overall com combined should be approximately the same, you know, 10%, 20%, whatever that is. So scrolling down, actually advance here, uh, I find here's your data that you should have recorded. One thing that should be different when you do your lab is that you should include, first of all, your units should be consistent, which the minute units are consistent here. They're all to one decimal place, even when they're a zero. Make sure you do that. Um, that's part of making sure that your significant figures are consistent and they're also precise. And then temperature should also be recorded. All your temperature should be recorded to the nearest tenth because that's what your probe's recorded to. So again, even if it's a point zero, make sure you have that. And then the other thing you should have is you should have the uncertainty with these. Besides having uh, the label and the unit, you should have plus or minus 0.1 minutes and plus or minus 0.1 degree. And if you include that with the heading, then you don't have to put it on every measurement you, you take. So then scrolling through, here's the calculations that was suggested that you do. And when you have your IA in the next week or so, you won't get these hints of calculations. You'll have to come up with this on your own. But basically, you're trying to calculate MCAT for the two reactions you did experimentally, and then you want to add those two values to get your heat of reaction. Um, for the desired reaction. So I'm going to look at one example of doing this for magnesium oxide. You'd follow the same process for the magnesium HCl and then carry it through. So the first thing it says is temperature change and then energy absorbed by the solution and then moles of magnesium and then finally kilojoules per mole. So we're looking to calculate four different things. So let me grab a clean sheet. So let me just record those. We want temperature change, delta T. We want the joules released. We want the moles involved. And then finally, we want to calculate, calculate a value for kilojoules per mole. So for temperature change, key things to keep in mind for temperature change is your initial temperature is easy. That's going to be you were supposed to let your stuff sit the first minute or two, first one to two minutes before you add the MGO, that should be your initial temperature. It should be approximately 22 degrees, 25 degrees, somewhere in there. It should be whatever room temperature was. Then when you add it, so if you looked at a graph of your temperature, this would be you'd have a slight plateau here, and then eventually it takes off, 
as your um, reaction is taking place and then plateaus and starts coming down. So initial temperature, that should be right here before the uh, MGO is added or in the second experiment before the MG is added. And then for your final temperature, you have two choices, but you should explain which choice you used and why. You can take the actual recorded, you can use the highest recorded temperature, and if you do that, you should justify it that this slope here was so minor that the extrapolation wouldn't have yielded a different temperature uh, greater than what your uncertainty was, your plus or minus 0.1 or 0.2 degrees that you end up with here. Otherwise, you can extrapolate your high temperature. So you can see on the picture here, what I've done is I followed the slope over here because this is showing us our heat loss over here. That's what this should be indicating is the rate of heat loss. And so I extrapolated it back. I took it all the way to the y-axis. But really what I want to look at is what would the temperature have been at the moment I added my um, MGO if we hadn't been losing heat. And if we hadn't been losing heat and if that solution had instantly heated up, this is uh, more accurately what my final temperature would have been. And depending upon how big that is, you can decide to use it or you can go with the highest recorded temperature. But again, you should justify which one you're doing. So then... Um, Going on to, to the second one, so I'm just going to make up a value here for the temperature. And I'm going to say that our, my high temperature, um, from whichever way I decide to do it, my initial temperature, Ti, is 22 degrees. And my final temperature, and that should be 22.0, minding my sig figs. And let's say my final temperature was 29.2 degrees Celsius. So I have a temperature change of 4, 8 minus 2, 6.4 degrees Celsius. And I may be way too low or way too high, I'm not sure. But 6.4, and then my uncertainty comes in. This first measure had, measurement had an uncertainty of plus or minus 1 degree. And this also has an uncertainty of plus or minus 0 0.1 degree. So since I'm subtracting these two values, I can just add the uncertainty, and it's plus or minus 0.2 degrees Celsius. Now, the next time I use this temperature, I'm going to be using my MCAT formula. So then I'll need it as a percentage. So I'm going to go ahead and take 0.2, divide by the temperature change of 6.4, and I see that that's 3.1%. So I'm just going to make a note of that because I'll need it as a percent the next time I use it. So then the second thing we wanted to come up with was MCAT or my heat loss in joules. And this is for the solution. And remember, I just figured out what delta T is. We're assuming M and C of the solution is equal to water's values. So when I plug in MCAT here, and I'm going to get a new slide here because I can't screw. So when I plug into MCAT here, I'm going to put in 100 grams, and somewhere I should show that my mass was, I found it because I had 100 centimeters cubed, and you might have had 99.8 or um, whatever you had, but your value should go to the nearest plus or minus 0.1. So I had 100 centimeters cubed plus or minus 0.1, and I converted that to grams assuming it had the same density of water, which is 1 gram per centimeter cubed which is where my 100 grams came from. And this would be, the 0.1 would um, be 0.1 centimeters cubed. It's also 0.1% since we have a 100 centimeter cubed sample. So this is going to come with an uncertainty of plus or minus 0.1. And then my C value, I'm going to plug in 4.18 because I'm assuming it's the same as waters. And then my temperature change was, let me go, the temperature change was 6.4 and that was plus or minus 3.1%. So now when I go ahead and calculate delta H, I've got 100 times 4.18 times 6.4. I'm coming up with the value of 2675 
0.2. This is going to be really low, and this is going to be a lot of heat loss, so I'm hoping your results will be much better. And then as far as my uncertainty, I add up the uncertainty for the two values that had uncertainty. So, oops, up here, the 3.1 and the 0.1%. So now I have a combined uncertainty of 3.2%. I can go ahead and change this to kilojoules, 2.6752. I'm not going to worry about sig figs until I get to my final value, and this is 3.2%. So the next question is, how many moles did I have in this experiment? And this is a little bit tricky because I don't know what my limiting reactant was. So I'm going to take a look at my, um, my reaction that I use. So I'm going to pause and write the reaction here as, long as, as well as the starting amounts. Okay, so from my instructions and my data table, I was supposed to measure out one gram of MgO, and mine, you know, was exactly 1.00. Yours unlikely, that's exactly 1.00, but that's what I'm going to use. And so if I want to convert this to moles, I would divide this by the molar mass of MgO, which is the 24.31 for magnesium and the 16 for oxygen, and that's 40.31 grams per mole. So this is really the same as... 1 divided 40.31. This is really 0 0.0248 moles and plus or minus 0.01 moles. That's how many moles of MgO I have. And then I can see over here MgCl2 then is in a 1 to 1 ratio, so it would also be 0 0.0248 moles of my solution or MgCl2. A hundred uh centimeters cubed of HCl, it had a molarity of, let me find it here, one molar. So if I take, this is 0 0.1000 centimeters cubed times a molarity of one mole per centimeter, then this is, um, um, I have got 0.1 Zero, zero, zero moles of HCl and if I look at it I see it's a 1 to 2 reaction and even if I cut in that in half 0 0.0500 zero, zero moles of MgCl2 is still greater so my um, limiting reactant is going to be determined by the MgO and I'm going to be limited to 0 0.0 248 or 0.025 moles. Um, I can leave it 0.248 for now. So now I've got my my kilojoules. I've got an error of 3.2 percent. I've got my limiting reactant and it comes with an error of 0.01 um, grams. Now this uncertainty I have to convert to a percent up here before I divide and get it to a molar amount. So 0.01 of 1 is really 1%. So this uncertainty here really should be plus or minus 1%. So now when I come up with my kilojoules per mole, if I scroll this just a little bit, oh, it's funny it's not uh, scrolling the whole thing with me. Okay, I'm going to scroll that up. I'll go that tight. So then to come up with kilojoules per mole, I take the kilojoules calculated for this equation, 2.6752 plus or minus 3.2 percent and I've divided by the 0 0.0248 moles plus or minus 1 percent and my value is 2.6752 divided by 0 0.0248 so now I should be thinking about my sig figs um, my sig figs are really limited by my temperature to, um, to 2 so I'm coming up with 107.87, but I really have to round this to 110, and that's kilojoules per mole, and that's plus or minus 4.2 or 4%. So then, um, as far as the rest of your data, um, I should have mentioned this at the beginning, what I would do is I would do my temperature change um, for all three trials and then average the three, and use the average temperature change. I'd also use average mass of MGO, and I would do this calculation just one time 
for each equation. One time for the MgO plus HCl, and then one time for the magnesium metal plus the HCl. So remember, your uncertainty won't increase when you average it because you also average the uncertainty. But then once you have this value going back to my first page, instead of 110, we expected a value of 151. And then so we're off by 151 minus 110 is 41 divided by 151. So we're off by 27%. Um, with my just made up data and again, hopefully yours is closer. So the kind of a thing to keep in mind is if our second reaction with the magnesium metal and HCl is off by a similar amount, we could be pretty sure that all the uncertainty is due to our systematic error of losing heat in the calorimeter, which we expected to happen. So that is the basic rundown on how to do the calculations for the Hess's Law Lab.